Hello and welcome to the Monday, December 12th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Rob on Friday published an update to his port scanner written in PowerShell. The original version worked, but uh, well, was slow compared to other tools, particular of course Nmap. So uh, Rob updated the tool to actually perform scans in parallel, which did significantly increase the overall speed and uh, then of course also led to results that are actually faster than Nmap. Well, take a look at his post for the entire code of this port scanner. And the Clarati uh, Team 82 research uh, team uh, published a blog post with a trick that they say allows them uh, to bypass common web application firewalls. The attack they focused on was SQL injection. SQL injection is of course quite popular, OWASP top 10 and all, and uh, Various web application firewalls do have rules to detect a SQL injection. The problem with detecting SQL injection attacks is that, of course, with SQL, we have a wide range of formats, queries, and such that uh, can uh, be used in order to bypass some of uh, these rules. And uh, web application firewalls then have to sort of play catch up, not just uh, with creative ways how attackers are bypassing the rules, but also with SQL servers who keep sort of adding features and uh, making it uh, more difficult to cover the entire space of possible uh, SQL queries. The latest feature used by Team82 in their uh, web application firewall bypass is JSON. Turns out that uh, major SQL databases added the ability to use JSON as part of their query language. SQL Server, Postgres, SQLite, uh, MySQL all now support JSON, at least in their latest uh, versions. And uh, Team82 shows how standard rule sets uh, for uh, various web application firewalls and next generation firewalls like uh, Palo Alto F5, also cloud-based ones like Amazon, Cloudflare, Imperva, can be evaded using uh, these uh, JSON uh, queries. In general, web application firewalls are still you know, useful tools, but you should always consider them just as sort of one link in your defense in depth posture. Assume that a smart attacker may be able to bypass them. And talking about bypassing security controls, uh, JFrog uh, wrote up a neat trick that can be used to evade protections put in place to avoid NPM malware. Malicious NPM packages are still a major issue, not really covering them every time anymore when they come up, uh, but one of the defenses includes the NPM audit feature, which compares the NPM package versions installed on the system to a database of known vulnerable and malicious uh, versions of packages. The issue is rooted in how version numbers are expressed in NPM. Usually NPM package versions are expressed as three numbers delimited by uh, dots, the major and minor version, and then you also have a patch level. But there is an additional option. You can then add a dash and a string, and that's typically used uh, for sort of uh, beta versions or pre-release versions of certain libraries. Adding a pre-release version string to a package version sufficiently confuses the NPM audit tool to make it miss vulnerable or malicious versions that include uh, this uh, feature, the, these uh, types of uh, version uh, IDs. As a precaution, you should just avoid uh, using uh, any pre-release versions, which probably is a good idea anyway, because they're pre-release after all, they're not necessarily uh, done yet. Of course, there may be some killer feature so that's being used uh, to trick you into installing them. And JFrog does provide a command line as part of the advisory to list all installed uh, pre-release uh, packages. And PCI released version 1.2 of its software security standard last week. This standard is intended for companies who create software dealing with payment cards. It is different from what we usually sort of refer to as PCI a standard, which is really geared towards merchants accepting uh, credit cards. 
most notably uh, this version of uh, the uh, Secure Software Standard uh, contains a specific section for web software. There are no big surprises really in this section. It is heavy on standard issues like uh, SBOM and encryption. What I would say with PCI is uh, even if you don't have to comply with PCI necessarily, I think the same is true for this standard. You just write software. It doesn't really deal with credit cards necessarily. Some of these standards are still sort of common sense standards and uh, worthwhile looking at to maybe see if there's uh, something that you can sort of borrow for your internal uh, development uh, practices. And finally, in patches, we got an important update for VMware ESXi and vCenter. The vulnerabilities addressed uh, could be used uh, to escape the VMware sandbox or to access clear text passwords. And for those of you who are thinking ahead, uh, well, Patch Tuesday is coming up. Uh, this is not only the last Patch Tuesday in the year that's coming up, but it's also, well, the next to last Patch Tuesday for Windows 8.1. After the January Patch Tuesday, Microsoft will no longer publish updates for Windows 8.1. So probably your last chance now to start thinking about getting rid of Windows 8.1 if you are still using it has never really been that terribly uh, popular, I think. So uh, likely less of an issue than some of the other uh, Windows versions that sort of ran out of support in uh, recent years. And is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.